partnered by Feel free. It's Galaxy Note. You have drooled over their posters. You have admired them on the screen. You have dreamt about them since you were five. Now catch them live. Auto Expo 2012. Through the week. Only on Bloomberg UTV. Technology is evolving. We tell you the most anticipated gadgets of 2012. Be there this year, the most happening events on the calendar. And you don't want to miss any of these. Also, the most stylish people in the film industry and their big releases in the year 2012. Big part so much love. <laughs> Silence, please. Business aspect, I understand it. It helps me to make the movies. Your film becomes a brand because people will take to it in a certain way. For a creative producer, it takes a lot of heart. In my creative decisions, I am not thinking about box office. It upsets me when someone robs you of your hard-earned money. Cheats and fraudsters pay caution to my warning. Crime doesn't pay, it gets exposed. So get ready to be exposed to the truth. Get the discussion going forward. We've lined up a panel discussion where we'll be talking about what are some of the benefits of telepresence and what kind of an impact will it actually have going forward from here on. Let's start off with first understanding as to what telepresence is all about and what it actually means. Nicholas, let me come to you with that now. Firstly, tell us as to how telepresence has actually evolved and revolutionized the way people collaborate and do business. I think uh, Mike emphasized this in his presentation and very much what telepresence has brought is the visual aspect within collaboration. <coughs> we are all familiar, we've all grown up with some form uh, or shape or form of collaboration being email, audio, and maybe collaborate on a particular document together. But bringing that visual aspect is very important. We know as human beings that over 60% of communication is nonverbal. Bringing that level of communication within any document or any business workflow is absolutely the critical part that has changed collaboration. Fair enough, Ajit. Let me get a planned perspective coming yep. onto this. In fact, you know, what kind of trends have you seen when we talk about collaboration in terms of the industry? What have you actually seen over the last couple of years? Yeah, that's, um I'll, I'll set my experience on the same thing on collaboration, what Mike said and as you said. It's, it's very important of uh, one of the, you know, factor for the better communication. When we do any kind of project or any deliver anything to the customer, it is essential factor that I need to deliver and it's, there is a clarity on everything. And uh, there is always a fear that, you know, when we deliver for a U.S. client or a U.K. client, that we are far away from the place and how do we deliver, what are the ways and means of deliver. So that clarity is required. For that, uh, you know, I will stress upon the collaboration. The trend is, you know, um, as a user, I have seen it 10 years back or say, say 15 years back, what we used to do is used to have regular teleconference saying that, yes, this is the way we progress and this is the way we are delivering. But, you know, when we have a video conference or a face-to-face -face conference, the confidence of the client on us and the requirement, the clarity from the customer is so clear that it is easy to deliver. So that's where, you know, I can see the, you know, the benefit of what Mike said and, you know, altogether that communication and then clarity of the collaboration has to be there. I can visualize that one very much. So, yeah. Uh, other point is, you know, 
when uh, we talk about uh, collaboration, it comes that how, how quickly I can resolve my uh, customer's requirement. If it is um, within a two time zone, I work in the US time zone as well as in the India time zone, how quickly I can you know, fix their uh, solution, to, uh, I can give a solution to their uh, problems. So that is another factor that I have seen throughout the last uh, you know, 10, 15 years which has improved a lot. Earlier we used to have a, we had to wait for the email to come and then we have to address it. Now somebody can call me and then I think that here yeah, I have to fix it and we have to fix it in the, in the go. That's the two points I can highlight on this uh, trend. Sir, in fact, you mentioned a lot of technical aspects out there. Actually, let me get you in on to this because yeah. in terms of technicalities that we are talking about, the way it's actually helped and the way it's actually evolved over the last couple of yeah. years, what do you, how, how can you actually elaborate on that? Actually, one major trend that is under everyone's eyes is the mobility boost. Mobility boost means not only the uh, huge amount of device, OS and uh, you know, form factor that are appearing in the market, but means also having people wanting to use that, not only in their personal life, but also in their working life. So the bring your own device stuff is something that is a, a great opportunity for the enterprise, but potentially a threat as well, you know, because of security issue. So this is a, a particularly uh, effective trend since people want to get, you know, keep in communicate. They want to do what they're doing on their fixed uh, phone on their laptop and they want to do this in mobility. They want to have the capability to cooperate, to have visual communication because as uh, Nicholas said, they want to be effective in the way they're doing their working together, but they want to do it in a ubiquitous way, independently of where they are, independently of what they have in their hands, and ideally in a single device. Fair enough, Ajit. Let's also elaborate on that. Tell us how does telepresence actually fit into your broader communication strategy and right. how does it actually fit into your internal strategy when we yeah. talk about what you work with? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was trying to add to his point that from the user perspective, as a user, what do I look into the whole aspect that in the technology and the device and the communication protocols are the, in the video conferencing, I take care, I, I look after three points. One is, um, as you said, reliability. Second one is interoperability and third one is definitely it's secure and it's good quality. Like when I am communicating to the customer, to the, you know, you know, to the, to the client, it, I should not have a disruption. You know, if there is a breakage on the break on the, you know, communication that gives a long impression. Second one is how secure is my communication? If I am talking something very confidential, is it um, something which cannot be, somebody cannot copy it or then reproduce once again on some, you know, Facebook or somewhere else. That is what we take care. Third one is whether I am using Cisco or something else, some other platform, other person, do, uh, he has to use the same platform or it is across the platform. Can it, can it be communicated across the different platform? That's what uh, three things we uh, usually check for it. If it is okay, then we'll go ahead and have a strategy for the next, you know, implementation of a new technology. Mm. Anything that you would want to, you know, ask the, uh, ask the viewers to actually keep in mind mm -hmm. and ask the people in the audience right now to just keep in mind, you know, when you look at this technology yeah. as to what needs to be done. Look, uh, don't be intimidated by it. Um, some of the most interesting and some of the most uh, cost efficient, whether being cost savings or revenue generation, are very simple. So I would encourage you, start small. There's pick a business workflow within your environment and you have a very low cost of entry and try it out. The key is not so much the technology working. The technology is there. The, the industry has taken it that far, it's there. The important thing is getting your employees, your staff using it and, more, and then secondly, your CFO is saying, hey, we saw the cost savings or we saw the revenue generation. So, answer your question, start small. Start small, it's very easy to expand from there. You don't have to take a big, big approach to it. Mm. But on that note, let's also throw open the floor for any yeah. questions from the audience as of right now because you've all been listening in to keenly what Mike said, what we've been talking about. So let's get a couple of questions going. Six minutes. Yeah, to bring it to the yep. desktop level now, yep. uh, to keep the bandwidth, because the bandwidth in this country is very, the cost of hiring is very high and to keep it uh, blocked for 24-7 for is uh, yeah. too high because the usage is not going to be continuous. Yeah. So in such a scenario, is Cisco doing anything to compress or uh, bring in a different hardware 
so that the bandwidth actually required to have the similar user experience with the 